The term fault tolerance means a computer's ability to continue performing accurately and reliably despite errors or faults. While this concept also applies to classical computers, they've long been so reliable that fault tolerance is often assumed in that context. In contrast, even the most advanced quantum computers today still have error rates that are much higher than their classical counterparts. Enabling complex quantum algorithms to run accurately despite these errors is a major focus of research. A truly fault-tolerant quantum computer will be one of the most transformative technologies of our time. But why do these errors occur? A common way to visualize a quantum algorithm is through a quantum circuit diagram like this one. Each block represents a quantum gate, an operation performed on one qubit shown on a single wire, or multiple qubits shown spanning multiple wires. The circuit depth is measured by how many gates act sequentially. Errors arise in many ways. Imperfect physical implementation of gates, inaccuracies in measurement readout, unwanted coupling between qubits, and interactions with the environment. Because each gate in a long sequence of gates introduces some probability of errors, deeper circuits will inevitably accumulate errors, degrading the fidelity of the final quantum state. Many important quantum algorithms run very deep circuits and can thus only be performed on a small scale on modern quantum computers. These include Shor's algorithm for finding prime factors which could threaten RSA encryption, and quantum phase estimation, or QPE, which is used in chemistry and physical applications. Running these algorithms reliably at a large scale would require a large-scale, fault-tolerant quantum computer. So how do we address these quantum errors and achieve fault tolerance? There are several approaches which include quantum error suppression, mitigation, and correction. Error suppression means recognizing what processes lead to certain types of errors and avoiding them. As an example, sometimes a qubit sits idle while other qubits are being manipulated, and it turns out that this idle time leads to errors. Instead, we can insert a gate U and then its inverse, U dagger. These gates are not necessary for the algorithm, and indeed the second gate undoes the action of the first. Why exactly this works is complicated, but roughly speaking, by splitting up that idle time between U and its inverse, a certain kind of error gets reversed. This is a type of error suppression called dynamical decoupling. Error mitigation works by analyzing how errors affect calculation and then adjusting the results to approximate an error-free outcome. A notable method is zero-noise extrapolation, or ZNE for short. Here, a quantity of interest is calculated normally and then repeated with artificially increased noise levels. By modeling how the results degrade with increasing noise, the error-free value is extrapolated. This is tricky since it requires increasing noise and errors by a known factor and requires multiple circuit runs, but it can improve accuracy. Finally, error correction encodes quantum information redundantly onto several physical qubits to form a single, robust, logical qubit. This allows the system to detect and correct errors on individual physical qubits. However, this requires many physical qubits per logical qubit and demands complex connectivity for effective checks. Technically, it is possible to implement some kinds of error correction even today, but only on one or a few qubits. That's important work, but improvements to today's quantum computers will be necessary to scale the number of logical, error-corrected qubits, because in order to solve impactful problems, we need to have many logical qubits. So the real game-changer is not just fault tolerance, but large-scale fault tolerance. IBM researchers recently introduced the Gross Code, a breakthrough that encodes 12 logical qubits into just 144 physical qubits. That's about an order of magnitude improvement in efficiency over previous codes. This innovation represents a major step towards scalable, fault-tolerant quantum computing. 
Because of the high quantum overhead in error correction, the need for so many qubits, it's unlikely that error correction alone will replace error suppression and mitigation. It's most likely that the first fault-tolerant quantum computers will employ a mixture of all these methods, leveraging error suppression to prevent errors, error correction to correct them as they occur, and mitigation to intelligently handle whatever effects of noise and errors slip through. The IBM Quantum Roadmap is a transparent plan showing steady milestones from now through the 2030s, including new processors and technologies designed to scale fault-tolerant quantum computing. The roadmap includes a large-scale, fault-tolerant quantum computer called Starling just a few years from now. Starling will be capable of running 100 million quantum operations on 200 logical qubits. This is a foundational step toward an even more powerful fault-tolerant quantum computer called BlueJay, capable of running 1 billion quantum operations on 1,000 logical qubits. For more on the path to fault tolerance, check out the IBM Quantum Roadmap. And to learn more about quantum error correction, check the links below this video.